Welcome to King's Cross. We're, We're glad, glad you're here. here. <laughs> Good morning. We're the cicadas. Welcome to King's Cross Church. We're glad you're here. Welcome to King's Cross. Would you please all join together in song? Majesty, your glory is shining brighter than the moon and the stars. Marveling, we honor and fear you above all gods. Glorious and mighty, you're awesome in beauty, joyful songs we raise. Glorious and mighty, you're awesome in beauty. Majesty, you fashion the heavens, your decrees can never be changed. Over all the plans of the nations, your judgments reign. Glorious and mighty, you're awesome in beauty, joyful. Songs we raise, glorious and mighty. You're awesome in beauty, greatly to be praised. Majesty will sing with creation when you come again in the clouds. Every knee will bow down and worship the one true God. Glorious and mighty, you're awesome in beauty. Songs we raise, glorious and mighty. You're awesome in beauty, greatly to be praised. You are greatly to. morning, King's Cross family. I'm so glad that we get to have this time to reconnect, that we can reconnect on the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is something we long for and my soul longs for every week. As a church, we want to gather around the person and teachings of Jesus Christ. We want to grow in the gospel of Jesus and we want to glorify the name of Jesus as we share life together, as we worship, as we make disciples, and as we show mercy to the broken and needy in Eastern Loudoun County. This is what we're all about. I was thinking, reflecting a little bit earlier this week about the amazing, uh, interesting relationship, time-honored tradition, this relationship, this bond that exists between children in the backs of cars and, and truck drivers going past them. That there's been this time-honored tradition of kids, uh, as their parents are passing these truck drivers, of kids, you know, making this sign, hey, honk your horn, honk your horn, and every now and then a truck driver will oblige. And I, it's a beautiful partnership, I, I assume, for the truck drivers part too, where, uh, where, hey, the kid gets a break from their boredom in, in, in getting a truck driver to do that, and the truck driver gets a break maybe from their boredom and gets to see the gleeful smiles of kids as that loud air horn uh, fills the air because they made it happen. Uh, man, there are a lot of bugs here. 
Well, I was thinking about this lately because as I hear sometimes people talk about God or even talk about their relationship with Jesus, sometimes it feels like, uh, and I realize I kind of do this too sometimes, it feels like uh, our relationship with God is it's like we're just waving our arms sometimes trying to get his attention. Just trying to get something back from him, like trying by our good behavior, by our, our, our giving, by, uh, by our worship, by our praying, uh, somehow to get God's attention that maybe he might uh, shine down on us. And, and it made me reflect on that and realize how much of the gospel I miss out on in day-to-day life. And so I want to remind us of that this morning, of the truth, that because of Jesus Christ, if you have faith in Jesus, or even if you're just pursuing what having faith in Jesus is like, let me tell you this, that because of Jesus, if you are his child because of him, that God is not up there to be, to be waved at, trying to get his attention. No, no, God's attention has never been diverted from you. That, that his, his gaze and his loving kindness are always fixed upon you and can never be taken away. That that whatever kind of a time you're going through, whether you're in a place of need or in a place of joy, a place of sorrow or a place of of not being sure which direction, what choice to make, that his, His eyes have never gone, have never parted from you. That they've always been yours. So whatever kind of a time you're going through this morning, whatever kind of a week it's been, you can know that God is with you. He has not forgotten you. You don't have to wave You don't have to wave your hand and make him try to honk his horn. No, his eyes have never left your your face because of Jesus. And so having received and still enjoying the benefit of all his attention on us, let us give him our attention and worship at this time. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we look to you as we know that your eyes have never parted from us. And we ask that you would fill our hearts with very much needed reminders and fill our minds with more and more of the truth of of how it is that you would love us and, and with the fact that you do love us unconditionally because of Jesus. As your grace and as this truth enters us and fills us, we pray that this would make us long more and more to honor you and glorify you in every way you command us to do so, in every way that we are designed to do so. Be glorified this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, hey, as we continue our time of worship, I have a call to worship from Isaiah chapter 12. It's a shorter one today. May this stir our hearts to worship. All right, so I'll read it and I invite you to read in the response. Sing praises to the Lord. For he has done gloriously. Let this be made known in all the earth. With me? Shout and sing for joy, O inhabitant of Zion. For great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. He is in our midst. Let us worship him. Give him our all in praise.
Iltis, please join me in reading this morning's scriptural confession of faith from Ephesians 2, 1 through 7. We believe in God the Father, rich in mercy, who, because of his great love for us, made us alive with Christ, his Son, even when we were dead in trespasses and sins, in which we once walked, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind. It is by grace we have been saved. We believe God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace, expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Amen. Thou my vision, O Lord of my heart, not be all else to me, say that Thou art. Thou my best thought, by day or by night, waking or sleeping, Thy presence my light. Thou my wisdom and Thou my true word I ever with Thee and Thou with me, Lord Thou my great Father, I Thy true Son Thou in me dwelling and I with Thee one Riches I heed not, nor man's empty praise Thou mine inheritance now and always Thou and Thou only first in my heart I King of Heaven, my treasure Thou art I, King of Heaven, my victory won. May I reach Heaven's joy, so bright Heaven's sun. Heart of my own heart, whatever befall, still be my vision, O ruler of all. Heart of my own heart, whatever befalls, still be my vision, O ruler of Hey, I just have a few announcements. Again, if you tuned in since uh, we began and you're visiting, my name is Paul. I'm one of the pastors here. Welcome to King's Cross. We're so glad that you're worshiping with us right now. There's a couple announcements. One, hey, we're excited to have Pastor Chris Six, who is a church planter. He is preaching for us today. Chris uh, has preached for us, I think, last fall. Uh, he and his wife, Naomi, are planting in, in the gathering stage of planting One Voice Fellowship in Alexandria, where they live now. Chris is going to preach today from James chapter 1. We are so excited to have him with us today. Just a quick reminder, our Baby Buddies program is in full swing, and it's been so good to see a number of gifts come in this last week, and, and some of those uh, and I think one of those moms has received those gifts and has really appreciated it and let us know how much she appreciates, uh, how much she has appreciated our generosity. Uh, in short, we have a member of King's Cross who has been walking with seven lo local young women during their unexpected pregnancies. They have chosen to keep their babies, to deliver their babies. Uh, 
and we have an opportunity to support them with our prayers but also with their with gifts because they don't have the resources that they need to to take care of a child so this is one way we can love and serve them and honor Jesus as we do so as well so uh, look up the list on Instagram or contact myself or Megan or Catherine Pelucci uh, as we coordinate this and and love on these uh, young mothers uh, let's do this together. Hey, online giving is still important. And uh, in this pandemic, I want to let you know, please, again, if you are experiencing financial hardship, please reach out to us. Uh, let us know uh, so that we can find if there's any way that we can serve you. Let us know also uh, what you're going through that we can know how to pray for you or even uh, or, or serve you in, in other ways. Uh, but as we give, uh, we, we give as an act of worship. And recognizing that God really has given us everything that we have. And when we think of that, giving a portion of that back uh, really isn't that big a sacrifice. And we can recognize that it honors Him. It's an act of trust as well. So as we give, uh, give things we could give to, and spend on something else. Uh, let's also pray that God would multiply those gifts uh, to see His kingdom advance here in Loudoun County and even beyond. Right? All right, so uh, if you will, let's pray. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise, and, and we, we are in awe when we let ourselves steer our attention towards the truth, and we reflect on the truth of who you are and what you've done for us and, and what your posture is towards us because of the cross. Father, we are amazed that we might be able to comprehend a God that would give us a second chance. We might be able to comprehend a God, of course, who is just. Uh, we might uh, be, begin to comprehend a God who has set all things into motion and, and kind of left things to us to, to do well with. But, Father, it blows our minds to think of a God who has created all things, who has given us commands that we have violated, yet you yourself have come and paid the penalty for our violation of those good commands uh, and have kept your love and your promise towards us at all times. Father, this blows our mind. We pray this would transform us uh, even now. But Father, we also ask uh, that not only you would take this message and, and, and make it uh, and expand it uh, in, in our hearts, in our homes. Make it expand in our neighborhoods. Make it expand in in our in our, our communities. Uh, Father, we also ask that your presence and your promises would be very close to those of us who are in need right now. Father, I pray for I pray for Christian and Heidi Sequeira. I pray I pray for Christian and his family as they mourn yet another COVID nineteen loss uh, from his not just his cousin Sybil now, but also his cousin Alex who uh, who had lived in Honduras and now um, and now their, their family is mourning them. Father, I pray uh, for your comfort as well, Father, for, for those of us who, uh, who have other loved ones that have passed recently, or those of us who uh, know, know others who, who may have, who may be sick as well. I pray that uh, you would give healing to those who are sick. Uh, Father, bless those who are working in the front lines, in hospitals, in, uh, in other healthcare facilities who are doing testing, who are doing all these things, uh, that the public might, be, uh, might have safe places to go and receive treatment. In all these things, Father, uh, we pray that you, you would bless our community unto this end. We pray that you would put an end to this pandemic. Father, we pray for all that we are uh, trying to wrap our brains around with, uh, with this pandemic for parents and teachers and students who are preparing for whatever this fall, this next school year may look like. Father, give us all an awareness of your promise and presence that we might not freak out, we might not panic. Uh, Father, I pray for administrators, for teachers, for everyone who are making decisions that you would help them make the best decisions that would serve the, the most people, especially those who are in need. Father, we need wisdom. And we're not only wisdom, we need patience because there's probably, there is not going to be a perfect system that's going to help everybody the way they all need to be helped. Father, we are in need of so much. I pray you'd give us uh, your grace as we pursue flexibility, as we seek to honor you in everything that we do in this time. Father, we pray for those suffering in other ways, uh, for those suffering miscarriage, those suffering infertility. 
Uh, Father, we pray your comfort, your grace on these often silent and on these, these, these tragedies that are often kept private. Father, meet each every one of us who are suffering those things where we are. Uh, Father, co- give comfort where only your comfort can make any difference. Father, uh, we pray for those who are expecting and those uh, who are pregnant, who, um, Father, that they may be able to deliver safely and at full term. Uh, for, for Christina McCall and now for Carrie Patterson. Father, we're, we're, we rejoice at that news and we pray again for safe, healthy children. And not just for safe, healthy births, but that we as a church might be able uh, to, to help raise these children, uh, to know and love you and to be healthy. And not just for these children, but Father, also for uh, these young mothers who, are, uh, who we're connected with through this pregnancy center, uh, that they would also uh, be able to deliver healthy, uh, safe babies. And, and that you would use us, Father, uh, to help provide for their needs and that we would see you work in so many ways uh, through their situations. And yes, maybe through our generosity, we pray. We pray that just these gifts that glorify you as we give to those in need, that these gifts would, uh, would open doors perhaps, uh, that you would open hearts and that you would change hearts by your gospel and change entire families and change our community. Father, we pray that you would give us a love for your son Jesus and a love for your holy word. Work by your spirit to cultivate in us a greater mind for truth and a heart for the lost and a heart for those in need. Cause us to become more and more generous, Father, we pray. Teach us how to do relationships well with our, at home and with our neighbors. Uh, Father, help us in our workplace. Help us in our studies. Uh, help us in, in, so, in every way that we need it as we uh, prepare or as we even try to take time off on vacation. Help us rest. Father, there are many places that we have need. We pray that you would be sovereign over all of it and remind us of your promise and your presence. Father, we pray for those facing financial hardship that you would provide for them. And we pray, Father, uh, for this offering that you would indeed take it and multiply it for your, our, for your glory and the good of many in this community. And we finally we pray for Chris Six and uh, for the preaching uh, that he is going to bring us. I pray for Chris and Naomi and for their planting of One Voice Fellowship that you would cause, uh, that you would cause your name to be glorified and many to gather uh, many who are speaking different, who are speaking many different languages from different cultures, that we would see this beautiful thing succeed, this beautiful uh, work of your gospel to see many cultures come together with perhaps the only thing in common to being love for you, Jesus. Father, we pray that you'd cause us to succeed in the work of their hands of Chris and Naomi 6, that you would see that succeed. Father, we praise you and thank you for Chris and Naomi's recent successfully completed adoption of Naomi's nephew, David, now their son. Uh, Father, we are thrilled beyond belief at that. Father, change us by the preaching of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now we're excited to have Chris open God's word for us. Chris. Well, hi there, friends. I wonder if you've ever had this experience where you are walking maybe down the sidewalk and you walk past a group of people having a conversation and all you hear is, just a phrase or two of their conversation. Maybe a guy says, and then he dropped the whole thing right in the mud. And as you walk past, you're asking yourself questions. You're wondering, what did he drop in the mud? And why did he drop it in the mud? And was it on purpose? Was it an accident? Well, you can't know what he was talking about unless you hear the whole conversation. Scripture's a lot like that. We're gonna be looking at the book of James uh, in chapter one. But uh, it's helpful to know the full context of the book. Uh, Sometimes we take just verses out of Scripture. Um, In James uh, chapter 2, for example, we read, Faith without works is dead. Um, And that's very true. But what does it mean in context? Or in today's verses, we're going to read that religion our father finds pure and faultless is to care for widows and orphans in their distress, which is true. Um, But what does that have to do with the overall flow of what James is saying? 
So to understand it well, we need to listen well. We need to listen well to God's word. We need to listen well to one another. Life is all about input and output, maybe is a way to think about it. That what goes into our heads, into our ears, is going to have an effect on our hearts. And it's going to have an effect on our actions, on our hands. Um, And so listen for those themes, um, if you will, about input and output. As I read from James chapter 1, verses 19 to 27. Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not hearers only thereby deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit widows and orphans in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. Let's pray. Father, there is a lot in here that James has um, put down Um, on paper for us to understand. Holy Spirit, would you put these truths down on our hearts that they might influence how we think, how we feel, and how we act, uh, that we might be glorified in all we do. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So three things I think James is calling us to do in this passage. First is to receive. Second is to be changed. Third is to respond. So the first is to receive. And before James gets to verse 19 in this letter, he's already said a lot um, in chapter one about things we should receive. Just a few samples so you have the context. A few samples from verses one to 18. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God and it will be given to him. And when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights. He brought us forth by the word of truth. You see, the Lord has so much to give to us. Wisdom, the crown of life, every good and perfect gift. To get these things, James is asking us to be in receive mode. Many of you are too young to have used walkie-talkies. Uh, Before you could text message someone um, or send them a Marco Polo or a TikTok or whatever we're going to come up with next, before you could communicate on cell phones, um, you could communicate with a thing like this, a walkie-talkie. And the thing about a walkie-talkie is it has this big button on the side, a transmit button. And when you press that button, your voice is transmitted to every walkie-talkie on the same frequency. But here's the thing, these things only communicate one way at a time. As soon as you press the transmit button, the speaker turns off. You can only speak or listen. So I think one thing James is telling us here is take your thumb off of the transmit button. Just listen and wait until it's the right time to speak. Wait until there's enough radio silence on the frequency in whatever situation you're in, that it's your time to transmit. It's your time to speak. Verse 19 says, know this. In other words, James is saying, prepare to receive something important. Is your thumb off the transmit button? Okay, good. Now listen. 
He says, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. I need this so much. I need to learn this in my life. What is it, do you think, that gets in the way of us listening well, listening well to God and to each other? James gives us a few uh, things in chapter one. In verse six, he says, doubt. Doubt that God has something important to say to us. Doubt that he has um, the best in mind for us. Um, Verse eight, being double-minded gets in the way. Verses nine through 11 talk about riches, riches that can distract or dull our heart and mind. Verse 14, he mentions temptation and the enticement of our own desires. Uh, When our minds are fixed on fulfilling our own sinful passions, when we only want what we want, we plug our ears and we close off our hearts to any voice that would get in the way of that thing we want so much. And in verses 19 to 20, he mentions another thing that prevents us listening well, and that's anger. And I want to think about anger for a little bit. We get angry when we feel like we are not in control. We get angry when our idols are threatened. Recently, I did not listen well to my wife. Um, And this was not the first time. Um, I was slow to hear and I was quick to speak in this situation I'm thinking of. Um, I interrupted her as she was speaking because I didn't like where the conversation was going. I thought I knew the trail she was going on and I didn't wanna hear it and so I interrupted. I was unwilling to listen and I was quick to speak because I was angry. Um, I felt criticized, I felt misunderstood by her and I didn't want any more of it and so in my anger I cut her off. But you see, anger is not the answer. Proverbs 14, 29 says, whoever is slow to anger has great understanding, but he with a hasty temper exalts folly. You see, my hasty temper was foolish because it prevented understanding, prevented understanding for both of us. Another proverb, uh, 1727, whoever restrains his words has knowledge, and he with a cool spirit is a man of understanding. I've committed that verse to memory because I need to listen well to the word of God. I need his help that I might have a cool spirit, that I might be without anger, because I want to be a man of understanding. I want to be able to hear my wife and hear my Lord, but anger makes it hard. For me to understand. Besides anger, there's another um, way that often, another thing that gets in the way of us listening well uh, that I think we're seeing a lot of today is deflection. Um, I did this to my wife as well. Um, When she pointed out to me that I had interrupted her, my first temptation was to think, well, you interrupt me all the time. Yeah, but or what about is like a shield that is preventing the words of my wife from getting to my heart where they belong. When we say, yeah, but, or what about, we are deflecting the words we need to hear. It's not being quick to listen. It's being quick to speak, Um, but changing the subject and shifting the spotlight is deeply hurtful to someone who is trying to share with you, um, to um, people in our nation who are trying to share deep hurts. And when we say, what about this? What about that? Um, We are not being quick to listen. There's someone who never says, yeah, but. There's someone who is always quick to listen. And that's your father in heaven. If you are his child, If Jesus is your savior, then his father is your father. And I don't always listen to my children as well as I should, but our heavenly father is always quick to listen. 
He is quick to listen if we come to him with our sin. That's the first time we come to him. That needs to be the first time is that we come to him with our sin and we say, I have this thing inside of me that I can't deal with. And I need Jesus to purge it out of my heart. I need Jesus to be the sacrifice in my place, to live the perfect life I never could and to die a death for my imperfect life that I might have his righteousness. Then, knowing that I'm clothed in Christ's righteousness, I can walk boldly up to the Father with confidence that he will be quick to listen because I'm not coming based on my record. I'm coming based on Christ's. Romans 8.34 says, Who can condemn us? No one. For Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us. And he is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand, always interceding for us, always pleading for us. So the Father listens to you. And he also listens to the Son as he pleads on your behalf. And if you have the Father listening to you and you have the forgiveness of Jesus, then you can be confident that the Holy Spirit is also involved in your life. And he wants to help. He wants to help me with my anger. He wants to help us to be quick to listen. So point two is that we need to be changed. Change begins when I look in the mirror of God's word. When I look in the mirror, as James talks about, I see the zits and the blackheads of my sin in my life, and I know what needs to be cleaned up. And as we see them, then we are able to ask God to help us. Verse 21 says, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness. Receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. So there's two things in there James is urging us to do if we want change. Um, to put away all filthiness and wickedness. And that includes the anger, which does not produce the righteousness of God. You put away means to dump it out, to bury it, to put it to death. Anything in your life that's preventing you and me from obeying the second command, which is receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your soul. Again, we can't receive if we're transmitting. We can't receive God's word with meekness until we put away the things that are keeping us from listening. Paul wrote something similar in Colossians 3, verse 8. Now you must put these all away, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and put on the new self that is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. If we want to be renewed in knowledge, um, we must put away whatever's hardening our hearts, distracting our minds. And so before we can really be quick to hear our family members, our friends, our co-workers, our fellow students. We must be quick to hear the word of God. Um, in Jesus' parable of the farmer spreading seed on the ground, he says the seed is the word of God, but some of the seed grows and some of it does not. But it's never the seed's fault. The seed is the word of God. It's never the seed's fault in Jesus' parable if it grows or doesn't grow. It's never bad seed. It's only soil that is not open, that is not soft, that is not in receive mode. And so if you are resonating with any of this, if you're knowing that your heart needs to be more in receive mode to God's word, um, then ask the Holy Spirit to show you what you need to put away. Um, this is how it unfolded with my wife, just to wrap up that story. This just, just um, uh, two weeks ago in my disagreement with Naomi, um, before I could change, um, first the spirit had to show me my self-righteousness, had to show me that I was more concerned with vindicating myself and being heard than I was to hearing my wife. And then I had to ask the Lord to help me put that away, help me purge that 
And once I did that, I could be in receive mode so that when I opened the word of God and I read these texts, I could see not only where I was wrong, but also see the way out. Um, and so he led me back to shalom uh, with him and with my wife. So in other words, to listen well to my wife, I had to listen well to God's word. How do we listen well to God's word? How do we make it be something that um, is actually fruitful and rich in our lives? A few thoughts. One is to read it frequently, um, not because of legalism, not because of duty, but because anything that's part of our steady diet is going to become part of us. And the seed can't be implanted deeply if it's not part of our diet. Um, another is to read it thoughtfully. Um, a number of ways to do that is read the passage repeatedly. Um, listen to it um, while you are exercising or driving. Um, listen to it on repeat so you can hear it well. Um, you can meditate on the text. To read it a couple of times and then just close your eyes and try to picture um, being in that scene, being with the people that are being described um, to get an understanding of what David or Mary or Jesus was thinking or feeling in that text. Um, you can ask questions um, and journal as you read scripture. Ask questions like, what does this passage teach me about Jesus? What does God want me to see about myself as I read this text? Um, and then what will I do? How will I respond? How am I going to live differently because of what I'm reading in this text? Um, the last idea is to print out the passage. Sometimes I just like to print it out so I can underline and scribble on it. I can make notes. I can draw pictures um, or get a scripture journal um, so you can um, be more, if you're more of a visual learner. Whatever it is, find something that will help you receive with meekness the implanted word um, because that is what will transform our hearts and minds. And as our hearts and minds are transformed, our behavior will be as well. And so that's point three, um, our response. Look at verse 22. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. You see, if the, if the word we hear with our head um, doesn't lead to any kind of action, then I didn't hear it with my heart. I only heard it with my head. In other words, um, if there is no fruit, then the problem is in the roots. Uh, James 23, uh, verses 23 to 25, James tells us how foolish it is to hear the word of God and ignore it, to not allow it to get into the roots. Um, but he shares, by contrast, three specific kinds of fruit in verses 26 to 27. These are the fruit that we should expect to see when God's word is implanted deep in us and we listen, if our religion is pure and undefiled. And of course we can't do these things perfectly, uh, but the more we follow Jesus, uh, the closer we get to him, the more we will resemble him. So the first of the three things, kinds of fruit, is to bridle our tongues. A bridle, as you know, is a harness on the face of a horse um, in, in chapter 3, James expands more on this image. Um, he explains that when you put a bit in the mouth of the horse, um, then with just a, 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 a thin rope, you can control this enormous animal by directing where his head goes, specifically where his mouth goes. And so in verse 26, James says, if you think you're religious, if you think you're doing well in your walk with Jesus, but you can't control your tongue. Your heart is deceived. <coughs> Maybe you say, ah, well, you know, I'm just, I'm someone who speaks my mind. That's, that's how I grew up. But you don't realize you're not speaking your mind. If you're speaking in anger, if you're speaking in haste, it's really your heart that's speaking. When my words are judgmental and vindictive and defensive, I'm not speaking my mind. I'm speaking my heart. And my mouth is like that bridle. Um, uh, my mouth is directing, steering my whole life. But here's the thing. My words will be gentle and patient and kind if that's what's implanted in my heart. 
Uh, The second way to be doers of the word is to visit orphans and widows in their affliction. Orphans in the Bible is literally fatherless. So when you read orphans and widows in scripture, um, these two categories of needy people, um, they are often people who live together. It's a widow and her children, single moms. And in the culture and time that the Bible was written, to have no husband and no father meant you were extremely vulnerable without protection or provision. In Zechariah chapter seven, we see that God has compassion for all kinds of vulnerable people. So it's not only the fatherless and the widow, um, but they are two of the most vulnerable people. Um, But listen in verse nine of Zechariah seven, thus says the Lord of hosts, render true judgments, show kindness and mercy to one another, Do not oppress the widow, the fatherless, the refugee or sojourner, or the poor, and let none of you devise evil against another in your heart. And so we see a lot of vulnerable people being treated um, uh, in a way that God does not (laughs) approve of um, in those verses. The question is, do we hear the cry of the poor, of the widow, of the fatherless, of the sojourner? Um, Are we sensitive to the pain of those who are overlooked and underprivileged? Or are we so concerned with our own security, our own comfort, our own agenda, that our ears and our hearts are closed? Zechariah 7 also addresses that attitude as well in verse 11. They refuse to pay attention and turned a stubborn shoulder and stopped their ears that they might not hear. They made their hearts diamond hard, lest they should hear the law and the words of the Lord. It is a tragic thing to have a heart that is diamond hard so that we can't hear the cries of hurting people right in front of us or the word of the Lord. By contrast, the heart of Jesus is so tender. His ears are so open. He saw and he heard hurting widows, lepers, the handicapped, the outcast. He was um, moved with compassion when he heard their cries. And so he acted, he moved toward them. And so we must hear and feel and respond. That's what James is urging us to do. Um, There's a positive example of this in scripture. When the apostles were approached by the Greek speaking widows, you remember in Acts chapter six, these immigrant widows had a complaint uh, because the majority culture widows, the Jewish widows were getting most of the food in the distribution. Um, They were getting preferential treatment over the immigrant widows. So don't miss that there is a cultural Um, and an ethnic discrimination happening here. Um, This is a big issue in the very beginning of the church. So will the apostles listen? Thankfully, they do. They are quick to listen. They are slow to speak. And when they speak, they speak with wisdom and compassion. And so we read that the early church elected the first deacons, the first board of deacons, and most of them have Greek names. Um, And so you have these immigrant men being elected to serve the entire church um, as deacons. And this is a good response to a crucial problem. And it's a response that only happens because these godly leaders listened. First, they listened to God's word. They knew passages like Zechariah 7. So they knew the heart of God towards the widow and the fatherless and the poor. And that's why their hearts were ready to hear the complaint of these widows. And they were ready to act after they heard. The third way that James said we can be doers of the word is to keep oneself unstained from the world. Um, And this really takes us back to the beginning. Um, The question of, am I in receive mode? Or maybe more accurately, we should say, Um, What am I receiving? Because we're all in receive mode. We're all 
tuned into something. We're tuned into a frequency. Our hearts and our minds are. But is it the right one? Is my mind and heart being filled with trashy entertainment and fruitless pursuits? Um, are my opinions driven more by my politics or my culture or my upbringing? Or are my opinions shaped by God's word? Paul, uh, James uses the word stained, which is a great word picture. You know, wood stain penetrates this wood. It gets down into the pores and the grain of the wood. And if my heart is stained deeply by the word of God, um, then it won't be so porous. It won't be so easily influenced by the world's corrupting voice. So in closing, in summary, three kinds of fruit um, I should expect to see in my life. If my roots are healthy, um, if my heart is in receive mode, if the word of God is being implanted deeply inside of me, um, I will be learning to control my tongue and I will be listening well to God and to others. Uh, and I will keep myself unstained from the world. Um, for my closing prayer, I can't think of a better way to conclude than by praying Paul's prayer from Colossians 1, starting in verse 3. And listen for some of the same themes in this prayer that we've been talking about um, here. Uh, let's pray. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. Of this you have heard before in the word of truth, the gospel, which has come to you, as indeed in the whole world it is bearing fruit and increasing, as it also does among you, since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God in truth. And so we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power, according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father. Amen. Hey, thank you, Chris. We have a confession of sin that we have written out. I invite you to read this aloud with me from your homes, from wherever you are, that as we read it aloud, that our hearts might be stirred in response. Can we do this? Let's do the, read this together. Almighty and all holy Father, we confess we have not loved you as we ought, nor have we always been loving to one another, kind-hearted, forgiving one another, as you, for Christ's sake, have forgiven us. We have lived in selfishness and worldly pride, quick to speak and to anger, and slow to listen. Pardon and blot out our offenses, we pray. Deepen and widen our humility, O merciful Father. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, we pray. Amen. Let's now take a moment of silent prayer and confession. Father, for these things we ask your forgiveness. Father, help us be aware of the shame we feel and bring it to you. Help us repent of the things we need to repent of and cultivate in us a greater, a greater, more quickness to repent uh, and help us to grow in repentance and faith and in joy and hope because of Jesus. In his name we pray, amen. Now hear this good news from Isaiah 1 verse 18. Now listen to this, how appropriate uh, uh, from uh, from this passage in James that we might listen and be quick to listen. So listen to God speak this over you, right? Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. 
Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. This is good news. Let us worship our Creator, our Savior, in one more song. You're the Word of God the Father From before the world began Every star and every planet Has been fashioned by your hand All creation holds together By the power of your voice Let the skies declare your glory let the land and seals rejoice You're the author of creation You're the Lord of every man And your cry of love rings out across the land Yet you left the gaze of angels Came to seek and save the lost And exchange the joy of heaven For the anguish of a cross With a prayer you fed the hungry With a word you calmed the sea Yet how silently you suffered that the guilty may go free You're the author of creation You're the Lord of every man And your cry of love rings out across the land With a shout you rose victorious Wrestling victory from the grave And ascended into heaven Leading captives in your way Now you stand before the Father Interceding for your own From each tribe and tongue and nation you are leading sinners home You're the author of creation You're the Lord of every man And your cry of love rings out across the land You're the author of creation You're the Lord of every man and your cry of love rings out across the land Amen. Now hear this benediction as we depart to go on with the rest of our week. May His truth carry on with us. Yes? Now to Him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or even think. According to the power at work within us, to Him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen? Amen. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Thanks for worshiping with us today. Have a great week. May this truth carry on with you. God bless. With a shout you rose victorious Wrestling victory from the grave And ascended into heaven Leading captives in your way Now you stand before the Father Interceding for your own From each tribe and tongue and nation you are leading sinners home You're the author of creation You're the Lord of every man And your cry of love rings out across the land 
You're the author of creation You're the Lord of every man And your cry of love rings out across the land